Now let's have a look at sharpening. These are the final few pages of chapter two, the core skills in um, working with Affinity Photo on the iPad. So we need to load in the first file we're going to use, and I've got them stored in the cloud. Filter sharpening. Now this is the fine detail one. Let's load that in. Sharpening fine detail is useful for enhancing the overall clarity of an image and helps to bring it to life. The amount of sharpening you apply is dependent on personal choice. It's also taking into consideration the intended delivery. So let's have a look at this one. We've got the file open and from the filters menu, that's the funnel, one, two, three, four, five, the sixth item down in the right hand menu, little funnel. Open that. Now we don't want all filters because it can take too long to find. So let's scroll there and find the sharpening filters. And the filter we want is the unsharp mask. Now that's the bottom one in that list of uh, filters there. So we just apply that filter by tapping on it. But what we want to do is sharpen the fine detail. So set a small value for the radius. Now let's see, radius is probably one pixel. That's a very small radius. Click on OK. And boost the factor slider. So we've got a factor of three. But there it's 10%. We don't want it quite that much. Let's just give it a factor of three. Then you click apply to apply that filter. Now that's all there is to it, and it is quite a difference. Um, not immediately obvious, but the fine detail within the waterfall, the grass around it, areas like that are much sharper when this is done. Now the next one is adding local contrast enhancement. So we'll hop out of that one, just close that down, we don't want to save it. We'll load import from the cloud. We load that one, that's the one used in the book. Now we can increase local contrast in this one and it adds its perceived clarity and is also a great way of separating tones in busy images. So from the filters menu, choose sharpen and clarity. Filters menu again, the funnel on the right hand side. We want the sharpen filter. Sharpen filter. And select clarity. That's the top one. Now we don't have a strength slider as it says in the book, but we want to increase the contrast between tones in the image. So we'll strengthen it by 100% clarity. One hundred percent. And that's sharpened it much more. It says in the book, drag the strength slider to the right to increase contrast between tones in the image. But in our case, we don't have that slider. Notice there, we've got the clarity. And we have apply, cancel, split and clarity. Now clarity is the strength. So we click apply and that's much sharper than it was. And that's all there is to sharpening in this section. We'll move on from here to let me turn the page. Now we go to thickening edge detail and a few others in the next little video. And this one's for thickening edge detail. So let's load in the required graphic and it's the live unsharp mask. 
Now we've got that loaded in there, and although it looks quite nice, it needs a little work. From the layer menu, choose New Live Filter Layer. Now this is a tricky one to find. There's your layer menu, but nowhere in there, nowhere in there does it talk to you about uh, a, a new live filter layer. So we've got to go to the filters, and that's the funnel, and add a live filter. So now you have your new live filter layer, and we need the unsharp mask filter. So let's scroll down all filters. There's unsharp mask, third from the bottom. So we apply the unsharp mask, and there's a little trick here too. So we need to drag the radius slider to the extreme right. Well, we can't. So let's put in 100% there. You can, of course, drag that up and down. But having done that, I'll put it back to 100%, which is where I want it. Because it says in the book, drag the radius slider to the extreme right to 100 pixels. Which is what we've got there. From the blend mode pop-up menu, choose darken. Well, we don't have a blend mode pop-up menu on here. As you can see, there's radius, factor, threshold, opacity, merge, reset, delete, and protect alpha. We've got to go to the option just above the filter with the three dots in there where you have brightness and contrast. Now we want to darken it slightly. So check on, check on that one and see down the bottom left hand side you now have brightness. And we want to darken it. So we want to go, let's say we go minus 100. Now that's quite dark as you can see. We can adjust that Minus 52, 51, oh, let's, let's do minus 50. Okay, now we can adjust that. We adjust the opacity option to control the strength of that effect. So there's your opacity option. We can drop that a little. That's not quite as dramatic. But it's definitely a sharper mask than what you had before. 52, there's 50%, and that's quite nice. Now if we go back to the filter, to our unsharp mask, our live filter, there we have it, merge, opacity, reset, radius, everything's back to square one there. And brightness and contrast, it's reset, but the image has not been changed, as you can see. And there's no apply on that one. But the image is definitely quite different. Okay, the last one of these two. Automatic adjustments. Now let's have a look at this image. We're doing automatic adjustments here. Not sharpening, but automatic adjustments. You may or may not use this one um, quite a lot. It depends on the photography. It's good with um, landscape photography. So we want to select the filter toolbar. And we either need auto levels or auto contrast. There's auto levels and there's auto contrast. You can see them just there. And there we go, it's darkened it slightly. Undo auto contrast, back to there. Now if we use auto levels, and there it is. You can see it's, it's considerably sharpened that. We can undo that goes back to the original photo. We want auto colors or auto white balance now. And there, once again, 
There's auto colour up the top. Hmm, quite nice. So with your landscape photography particularly, and this is a good example this, you can do that. Undo the auto colours and we want auto white balance this time. There it is on the bottom. Auto white balance. And that just adjusted slightly the white balance of the image. Now that's it for chapter two. The core tools. If, you, if you're familiar with all these core tools and you keep working with them and experimenting with them with your own images, they'll become second nature to you. Very nice.